All right. So good morning again for the record. And uh, before we get, we go ahead with the stand up. If we can do our just um, wellness check in, how is everyone doing? You can show us using any emoji reaction. How is everyone doing? How is the morning? Okay, I can see that we are pretty much doing well some of us any more reactions how are we doing oh i can see some exhaustion some patient faces i can see but i can see that also majority are doing well in this morning of friday day four uh yeah so let's get started with our routine stand up we are going to be sharing how was yesterday, did you face any blocker, and also how is the energy to run today. And of course, if you have any blocker, better raise it, but also if you do not have any blocker, take us through how you handled yesterday. Uh, yeah, and also we'll let you know if there is anything we are curious to know about your day yesterday as well. And for blockers, we have technical tutors, of course, here but also it will be super great if we help each other like answer questions if someone asks the question and you find that you can help please raise your hand and help so yeah let's get started let's have like five people on the queue very quickly you can raise your hands Hello. Okay, we have the first person on the queue. Let's get many others on the queue. Okay. Very sharp people. But let's get other people, like new people who never share in the first phase, raising their hands. Let's get more. Let's get more people. And then we get started. Hello, only two people to complete the queue. Raise your hands and then we get started. Okay, we are down to one person. Okay we get started for now so abraham the floor is yours uh, hello good morning everyone good morning how, how are you guys doing uh about my progress uh yesterday it was good uh, to be honest uh i was able to extract the data and I was able to load the data into the database. And I'm currently working on building the backend so that it can facilitate the communication between the Redash and the, the API. Uh, I have faced some blocking issue when I was crafting uh, an API for a um, backend API or an endpoint for the chat to treat the chat from the Redash inputs. I'm facing this working outside of application context issue. Uh, I'm currently using Flask in Quark. Uh, uh, I think I might have mispronounced it, but Quark or something. And I'm facing this working application, working outside of the application context issue. I have posted it on the week three on our channel, and I'm um, uh, here for any kind of assistance. And yeah. Okay, Abraham, thanks for sharing your detailed updates. That's super great. Did you face any blocker yet? Yes, yes. Uh, when I'm trying to craft a, an API for receiving the chat from the user, oh, yes. uh, uh, I was not able to accept the payload that comes with the request. It's saying working outside of application context. 
Oh, okay. I have also shared it on the channel, on our channel, Week 3 channel. And I'm hoping if someone could help me here. There are uh, the tutors, maybe. Okay. Uh, Nathaniel, can I pass the question to you? Nathaniel or Rahmet. Yeah. I, I didn't hear the question. I just joined. Could you repeat? The question, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, the question is, I'm trying to do LAN API for uh, the backend using Flask. And uh, normally it works fine. But when I try uh, posting, when I try to post something or using the post method with a payload delivery, and when I try to read that payload, it's giving me Hello. this error. Let's see. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, Abraham. Okay. Ramat, could you hear me? Yeah, I think, Arju, you create a uh, backend with Flask, right? Yes, yes. So then after that, I didn't hear the... Uh, I'm yeah, trying to hear this API. I'm trying to build this API. When I put something on the API, a payload, when I want to post something, and I try to access that data specifically in my API, it shows this error. It's saying it's a runtime error. It's working outside of the application context. I have posted it on uh, Slack, which we channel. Also, you could reference it there. Uh, you don't have to answer it right here. But... Yeah, I'll see it on the Slack. Then. Great, great. I'll, 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 I'll respond on the Slack. Okay, okay good. Thanks. All right, uh, let's look forward to the response on Slack. In the meantime, we continue to drop us. Hello. Hi, we, good morning, Jabez. Good morning. Uh, yesterday, progress was OK. Uh, I was able to figure it out how to uh, connect uh, Postgres with Redash, and uh, I'm able to uh, fetch the data from uh, the database and uh, design a, a dashboard on Redash. Uh, and then I was trying to figure out on how to uh, train the API to uh, fetch uh, information from the database. But uh, I, I have confusions on uh, uh, some of the tasks, for example, uh, I think is it is it okay if we uh, use the UI, the Redash UI for the dashboard design, uh, or should we write a, a code for that? And the second question is also, uh, we can query uh, on the UI, uh, but do we have to write a code for that too? And uh, the final confusion is that I, I, I don't know how uh, open uh, AI API can uh, read data from uh, my Redash query or from the Postgres database. Is, is, how can it? Uh, I, I, I saw the documentation on the open AI API, and there are examples on how open AI can read uh, data from a text or a PDF uh, and uh, how open AI assistants can use a tools like function calling or a file set or something like that. But I don't know how open API can uh, read uh, or fetch uh, data or read the database. If uh, there is any uh, hint on that or a direction that someone can give me, that will be great. 
uh, and thank you that's it okay for the using the redash user interface what is the purpose that you want to use i mean it's for the querying or for both i am using it for also to design the dashboard for visualization and also um, yeah. for the query yeah don't create any user interface you should use the redash user interface so I just use the Redash user interface to create dashboard, yes. also query? Yep, you should use the Redash user interface. OK, that's great. Uh, for um, passing the data, right, the other part? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the what kind of, have, when you fetch the, do you fetch the data? What, what, does that, what does it look like? Do you manage to fetch the data from the API? Is it an array or some object? How is the data represented on uh, when you fetch the data from the query using the API? Have you seen the data? No, that that is my question. I, I'm 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 fetching the the data from the database and I can use it on the UI or I can create a query. Yes. But yeah, you can. How, yeah. Yeah, it's just my my question is the co the API that's fetching the data from the database. The REST API, I mean, that's fetching the data from the database when a database connected with Redash. The first step is you have to figure out first how uh, the, that exact REST API is fetching the data. It might be like an array, it might be like an object. And right now, you're just seeing the user interface part. The database connected, and the query, you can access that on the query and do a query and visualization. That is how you do it on the Front end part, but on the back end, when the data, the REST API is accepting data when a database is connected with, Redash, with, Redash, with the Redash, what kind of data is output when that particular REST API URL is invoked? So I just first, I want you to see that data by accessing the REST API when a dashboard is connected with the Redash, find that data and see what that data looks like. So I'm guessing it will be an array or an object, then it will be accessed by the query for visualization functionalities to the readers. So you can pass that particular array or object if you find that uh, URL, which, which is, well, that is doing or that's responsible for fetching that data, you can pass that array or object to the open AI, oh. the medium. OK, so I, what I'm getting is that I have to find. Uh, it, I'm connecting the Redash with the Postgres using the UI, but there is a backend uh, code. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Exactly. It, there is a backend code that is doing okay. that part behind the scene. So you okay. have to figure out that one. OK. Uh, OK, can you give me a hint to where to look? Yeah, I I gave I gave that yesterday also. Start from the API .py file on the hundred folder. All the REST API URLs are found in that particular folder. Okay. So the name is also descriptive for the queries. All the URLs are indicated by the query's name, the dashboard by the dashboard. So it will be much easier if you start from that file. You will find okay. all the REST APIs that are doing the work for the redash behind the scenes. Okay? Okay. So okay. if you go to the redash source code, there is a redash folder. Inside this, there is a handler folder. And inside that folder, there is api.qi file module file. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, we can hear from Shamil. Okay, uh, thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, I had, uh, I, I actually started from scratch, and the good thing is, is, is working now, and I'm currently working on uh, integrating the, or like, like what would like to say is uh, from the engineering. So, for 
for OpenAI LLM to give us an SQL query based on the data we have. Uh, but the problem I've got is, I think, compiling the image uh, after iterating on the code. That took a long time. And I think unless there is someone who actually have found a better way, I think Rahmet pointed out on the Slack that we shouldn't be building YARN. That is, that actually reduces the time significantly. So I guess this is the my blocker currently. Thank you. Yeah, it's not much a blocker, it's just some uh, ways to do things better, right, the blocker? It's just, it took time to do it every time there's a change. Uh, it's just the matter of finding a better way. Other than that, I think for now, at least by doing this, you can uh, move on with your work. That's something that's blocking you from the work, from continuing the work, I would say, right, uh, uh, yeah, Yes. Uh, it, it, it's reduced the time significantly, actually. But yeah. uh, now, uh, uh, like I, I get it, I will be, I will try to be as precise as possible on my code. But mm -hmm. uh, also, the problem of having an inner is number one, it's hard to debug, and number two, there is no completion for the code. So sometimes the yellow lines appear that uh, even though the package compiles successfully, it says that it's not available. So that makes it a little bit harder. Is, is it when you install a new package or? No, no, uh, just uh, using the old ones, but it works. It's, it's just. Okay, that... it's just. Uh... Yeah, it's yeah. it's not like it's not made for the development. Uh, my right. my my next uh, issue is uh, like when we try to, for example, to add a prompt, we need the data. For example, like we need to access the table columns, the table names, uh, for the LLM to be given right. Yeah. So, so for that to happen, we need to have access to the data. So what I tried to do initially was uh, like there is a data source. For example, when we connect a data source, that's where we are trying to fetch the data. So I'm trying to get the data source from the back end. But I think we need to actually understand the code more deeper. It's like it became like a rabbit hole. So what I thought was, can I just connect to the database from the backend or just try to do it the proper way, like go to the data source and what is currently connected, then fetch from those data. But it's, it takes a, a lot of time, I guess. If I'm clear, I don't know. Yeah, so it will be given, I think next week also will be given time for you guys to work on this project. So it's better to figure out how uh, understanding the redirect source code. Uh, because you're building this chat up for the redirect and it should match, it should, I mean, it should combine with the redirect source code. If you connect it with other resources, it's just going to be another project, another way. It might make jobs easier, but it's not going to be a plugin for the redirect source code. It will have another data source, uh, database source. It's just uh, that's not what's required for the project. It will might it might make the job run, but uh, it, not, it will not be compatible with the redis source. Okay, it's, so it's, okay, so uh, in that case, uh, like, do you have any direction, clear direction that we uh, should be like we should be following through? For example, in my case, I was trying to understand the code base, even though it took a lot of my time. But uh, the first thing I think uh, that came to mind was to look at the data source, because that's where the database stores, where the data source is.
for example the users the user configured the data source in for, for example in my case i would add uh, postgres to that's where my data is so he on the back end i would actually query the data source and get uh, the query string or the data the connect the connection string then after that that is that the way to go what i'm trying to say yeah yeah you can uh, start from there our work is 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 that correct is that right you can do that i mean there's no uh, you can do that and you can also uh, take the advice that i gave you jabbies for understanding the just script from the backend so uh, at the end of the day your way also will be connected with the rest api so if you find the loop uh, the loop i mean the line that is making all the connection to query to visualize on the redash, I mean, you, it means you find the way, the right URLs who are doing the job for the application. So you can do that, Okay, I'll, I'll try to do Thank you. Yeah. All right, Ahmed, you can take the floor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, uh, I don't have too much to say because uh, I wasted my time uh, installing Redux. It didn't work until now. So I have a question. If I pull the image from Docker Hub, is this will work or uh, should the, one of my teammates uh, Push uh, the image to get to Docker Hub, then I will pull it. Uh, any one of this method will work. Uh, if I found answer for this question, this will be helpful. Uh, I'm sorry, Abdurrahman, I didn't quite get the question. Uh, I mean, if I uh, pull the readers image from Docker Hub, is this will work, or should one of my teammate? Uh, push it to the card hub, push uh, his image, and then I pull uh, this image. Is uh, when any one of this method will work. Okay. Um, I don't have experience in that one. Maybe if some other trainees who have done the way uh, he's referring to, maybe you can unspeak, uh, unmute and uh, give your thoughts. I'm not quite sure, Abdurrahman, as for my side. Uh, okay, no, no problem. Uh, I have another question. If I wasn't able to install Redash uh, for this week, what uh, the things that I should focus on? Uh, the main goal of the the project of this week, so I can catch up. Yeah, I mean, since it's a group project, if the rush is keep not, uh, not working, but you should find uh, all the means to make it work. You maybe change, I don't know, we, what's your operating system? Maybe if it's Windows that's giving you this much trouble. I think it's Windows, right? right. It's Windows, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, consider installing Ubuntu or the virtual box. I think we have talked on the Slack, right? Yeah. Yeah, so is, if you have a good internet, it won't take more than one hour. So you can change that. Uh, but also, since it's a group uh, project, the other who are who have a running redash can take that responsibility. You can help on the group with other stuff as well. Just it's a group paper, so uh, try to help each other out. Okay, I, I will work my, with my team to, to figure out how we can work in this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ahmed. And so for more clarity with your first question, can you post it on Slack so that we see if there is anyone who can help much better? Okay, I will do. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we can go on to Hillary. Okay, thank you. Good morning. And um, I 
so for me, I've been working on uh, try the backend and uh, and trying to integrate the uh, LLM. Uh, so I saw that uh, from the tutorial you're using chat completion, the completion. But when I go to documentation for Langchain, uh, there is a there is uh, there is another way of how to of how to get answers from model using LLM chain dot invoke. So my question is, uh, can I go with that approach because uh, we are to integrate long chain, and uh, and if it, can this approach work with uh, chart history, like um, uh, using uh, adding history for, for conversation? So that's my first and and the other the other thing is, uh, I've been trying to understand the red dash source code. We uh, so there's the main folder, and then there's a red dash. There's another folder called Red Dash, uh, which has the handlers and all. So there are a lot of files, uh, scripts and all. So for me, it's a challenge to 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 know how to organize where I put my back, my backend code. So uh, that is the the one for for routes mostly. So I, I don't know, and uh, and I'm still trying to figure out how to start from there. Okay. Um... For your first question, you can be creative with it. I mean, there's no limitation for it. So if you find something useful on the documentation, you can go ahead and uh, be creative with it. Okay, there's no any uh, limit. Uh, as for the second question, the folder inside the the, the, uh, the reader folder inside the reader folder is the one where the back input is found. I mean, there is a main reader folder, right? And then the second reader folder inside. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that one is where the backend code is found. Okay, so I, I've. Uh, you are on mute, Hilary. Okay, uh, so I'm having many handlers and uh, it, so like or many files, including handlers and all. So can I ignore that? And I mean, is it useful in in for me implementing the the backend for chat adder? Or, um, no, um, it's just understanding it is what is important for you just to see where is the data is coming from. That's what we want, right? Yes. To fade the data. So the reason why you are going over the redash source code is to see which uh, which functionality is fetching and for the data we need to have connected with this redash. Once you find that, there's nothing that you will have to do on the source code. You just move to the your LLA and try to make a connection. So That's let's say, okay, yeah. uh, one more thing, like let's say the visualization handlers, I'm assuming it, it is used to get the visualization. So like, are we to like add our own that is custom for, uh, that is using the, the LLM? Uh, yeah, I mean, for visualization, you mean, or after? Yeah, there's a visualization resource, and uh, and uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to like. Is it like to get uh, like? Is it the goal to to have only the chatbot so, so that it can when the user asks for something, it, it only gives a query back, and and then the user has to do that manually by inputting the code in the yeah. The query that screen. is the first yeah. That's the first option that you have. I mean, and the easiest option I would say is. To ask okay. for a query on the chat book and the user manually can copy paste that query from the chat book and do the visualization in the on the normal the existing redash way of doing things once you get a query. They can do that manually. And the second step would be if you manage to do that, is after the query the LLM responds that query by connecting automatically by some algorithm, maybe to put that request directly on both the redash visualization function and when the to for the once the user asks that question I want this query for this one not only the LLM will give us a response on the back end some there there would be some kind of functionality uh, invoked that also will make the visualization visible on the redrash user interface. Okay understood thank you. So yeah right now just first uh, focus on getting the data and making uh, making sure the chat is really become 
converse with the user about the data. If you finish that part, you can move on to that stage. Um, I work at it in the head. Okay. Uh, so, is there any way we can get the schema? Uh, I've been for the model for for the database. So that what 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 we should we could know what's being returned. If you know, uh, I've been trying to see the code base, the source code. So it seems like it's in model. I I found this yesterday, but I don't seem to find the where the mo model for data sources. I mean, are you talking about the already existing models on the? Yeah, yeah. So they are saved on the Redash Postgres database, right? The models are a representation of the database. Yeah. I remember that is what they're doing. Okay. okay. So I, those I models are saved on the Redash Postgres database. Uh, you know, their official Postgres database. Yeah, but uh, that was what I asked was the schema. Like, for example, if uh, the data source or any data is stored in the database, when we query the API, get the data right. So yeah. We want. I was. I just wanted to know what, what are the, for example, the parameters found. But uh, I think I found one. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll get what is fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. How about Darish? Okay, good morning, everyone. So yesterday, uh, yeah, we're making some progress as a group and uh, I'm starting at the back, back end. So, but yeah, I'm just, I created a Flask API and uh, so give to, yeah, give to all just uh, put to, put uh, my API to in chat.py file and uh, just trying to uh, ask question on dashboard, but it is not working because this I, I need to first make sure only question and answer before fetching the data. So maybe if, if someone just uh, did this thing is so and um, yeah can help me or any idea you have what's exactly the question Dorito? i'm sorry i didn't okay the question is uh i'm trying to just uh, add my code as a package so I'm try first I created the API flask so and then put to that API in uh, my code at chat.py but it is it doesn't work it so am I correct this I'm trying to only uh ask in the question so I'm I'm trying to put uh the code that's written in chat py okay uh, um, the already existing code on the chat .py should should be able to work it, yeah it, that works for you for the plugin yeah. itself yeah it is working for me yeah uh, the first okay you're just changing the functionality because the first also the purpose is just create uh, an answering question with the learning yeah um what is that if I, yeah. i'm just asking you code uh, what makes it different from the first one the first one just um outside the redash and uh, just put to my api in chat.py is that possible 
So is it throwing an error, maybe, uh, your code? Is it throwing an no, error? No, it's an error. There is an error. No error? Yeah. So uh, could you inspect your browser? Maybe errors are, you can see them on the browser when you run your chat and ask the, if the user asks something and the module is not responding, you can see the error. There is an error. It's not working because either it's the API key is expired, which it does. You are using the free API key, right? Or no, no, no. Um, yeah, it's just I sometimes the API keys. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm just giving you the possible errors since you are not seeing an error. But uh, go to the browser, right click on the browser while uh, you are on the Redux web server. And if you click, right click and inspect, it will give you uh, some uh, dialog box on the browser. And you can go, on, go find the console part. I don't know if you're following me, but on the console, uh, and when you are on that page, write something on the chat for the user. So when you say, hi, if the module is not responding, you will see the error on the browser. And that's a specific console dialog box. So if you find the error, it might, it might be easier to solve the problem. You do know uh, to do inspect on browser, right? Maybe if you don't know, someone can help. No, I know already. And I'm yeah. trying to check and I uh, will let you know. Yeah, check it and maybe post it on the. You we'll definitely post an error there. I will post if I get any this error. There's no error yeah. on the console? All right, uh, so before we wrap up, and one with any more question, okay, Hilary, you can go. Okay, my, my question is, uh, for the, so I I had to load the, the data to database manually using IDE uh, because my SQL Alcarian uh, cycle for, for having errors. And uh, so how can I like get the schema to for the, for the LLM, for the chat, chat the AI, AI to understand, because now, okay, one one thing I wanted to do is create a, an SQL, uh, an SQL file having the schema, and uh, the other would be like retrieve the schema for using get schema. Like, how can I go about that? Or another, uh, like create a. Uh, have a have a message uh, defined for it, a message that explains the schema. What will like be a, the appropriate way to to get the LLM to know about the database? I mean, what what are you thinking on how you can accomplish that? The first one, how you can pass the schema to the LLM? Do you have ideas, Hilary? Yes, uh, my. The first idea is having a, an SQL file that uh, has a, has the creatable statement, uh, which contains the schema, and then maybe read that and uh, read that file and, and give it to the, to the LLM as a message. And the other is to use a cycle. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so you use cycle to write. Up. So uh, if you pass directly the data from the Redash, the LLM might not understand it, so you are trying to figure out ways for the LLM to understand schemas. Yes. So you don't have to worry about that. LLM already is, it does know all the information when it comes to the database, SQL, Python, it's already been trained with this language. So if you manage to put the data, it will understand. It will understand it. So, but even in the normal module right now, the chat, or you can ask any SQL question or schema question, the module answers perfectly. Okay. So like, what you have to do is how you write the instruction, make it descriptive enough for the LLM to understand your instruction and understand the data. Okay. So my 
so like um so the, we have so in the database there's some columns like uh something like geography us and i'm assuming that's a region uh about the data like where the data is viewed if someone is going to say like get uh get me uh, the data views from us and and the key like the 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 llm probably has to understand that there's a column called that way so that it can give an SQL statement instead of you filling for yourself the columns again. So in that case, when you design your prompt, you can ident you can uh, give this each column names on the data on the, your table. Uh, you can define those names for the LLM. So you can tell this column's name. This is this one. It is you know some kind of maybe you can you can be creative how you. Uh, formulate your instruction, but you can let the LLM know which what the meaning of each column is for the table. So okay, if that, if prior to having that data, if the LLM has that information, it will be much easier for the LLM to see the data and understand. Yeah, I yes, I understood. Uh, I, yes, that was one thing I to, to pass it like uh, to pass the first schema prompt as a, as a chain then then now the message of the user thank you uh, you can also uh, the schema maybe if you do uh, you can design it uh, i mean i don't know if you can pass it as on the instruction if you if you can pass it as a string i, I don't know if you can do that but maybe you yeah. can yes yeah. that's what i meant to have the schema in a string and pass it as the first thing before the question yeah you can do that as well on the prompt you can put all those informations okay. uh, worker. uh yes but i was going to uh, add on to hilary's question but yeah. it was answered that uh, you can't just we don't need to access the data i guess since the user will be asking uh, give me all the columns of us and the us will be added to the query i guess we can just uh, uh, iterate through the columns in table names and just pass it to the llm yeah That's... you can do that All right, uh, thanks everyone who has engaged so far. Uh, before we close, Shabi, you want to say something? Yes, uh, but uh, if anyone here uh, is currently on that and uh, or for the columns to be sent or for the table in the column names to be sent to the LLM, for the LLM to understand the context, uh, we actually need to uh, get the columns. So if anyone would like to figure out or figures out how to get the columns, for example, probably it will be from the currently connected data source. So how we could get the data source, the, the, the data source credentials from the already saved ones that would be probably a good idea because it will get us to for the next okay hilary uh, yes I, I i think we can use psycho for this to 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 get the information scheme like using a select statement say select uh the table name column name from the schema that columns i think that will get but uh I'll figure it out and maybe post on Slack. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the, the problem is where we would get the columns. I think we can take it to Slack. Okay, I'll, I'll try to post my idea on Slack. Uh, 
in some okay. kind of okay start it right there okay amazing <clears throat> appreciate you all for uh the engagement here that was insightful and of course if you still have any question post it on the slack channel or week three so that we can have a discussion about it other than that let's call it a meeting and then meet in the next session i believe career session uh yeah and also enjoy the rest of your day thank you